Hey, in this video, I'm going to explain how puberty, pregnancy, and perimenopause can trigger Hashimoto's. So this is part of the series I've done on the different triggers of Hashimoto's, and you can, I'll put a little card up here so you guys can take a look at that playlist. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about how hormone surges, particularly the ones that occur during puberty and pregnancy and perimenopause, and how those can not only trigger Hashimoto's, but make Hashimoto's worse. So let's start by kind of just giving you a little short lay of the land about the immune system. Now I'm going to really oversimplify this. In a normal immune system, uh, you basically have two divisions, TLPR1 and TLPR2. And again, I kind of feel bad explaining it this simply, but it's the easiest way to get it uh, digestible. And in a normal immune system, TLPR1 and TLPR2 are very balanced and very regulated and very coordinated and everybody's happy. But when you have uh, an autoimmune condition like Hashimoto's, uh, the TLPR1 and TLPR2 kind of get disconnected from one another. There is no longer immune system regulation. There's a lot of inflammation. And hormone surges can make that balance, uh, that imbalance happen. So estrogen is kind of interesting because it can be both pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory, kind of depending not only on the amount of it in the system, uh, but the receptors that it's activating. So it's not like saying, what we can't say when we're having this discussion here today is that low estrogen causes Hashimoto's or high estrogen protects from Hashimoto's. It's not that way. Uh, the other thing you need to know about the immune system as we're talking about this is that some autoimmune conditions, the terminology that's used for them, some people call them a, a T helper 1 mediated condition or a, a T helper 1 disease or a T helper 2 disease. And that's largely kind of accurate. But the one thing that I'm going to stress today is that every person that has Hashimoto's is individual, right? They're an individual. And I've treated a lot of Hashimoto's patients over the last 20 years. And what I can tell you is even though they all may have thyroid peroxidase antibodies and they may have thyroid globulin antibodies uh, and they all have kind of, you know, kind of a, a, a constellation of symptoms like brain fog and hair loss and depression, and anxiety and uh, joint and muscle pain and constipation, even though all that stuff's kind of common, their immune systems and how you treat them is very, very individual if you're going to get the best, uh, best results. Okay, so with that in mind, how can puberty and these other times, what do they do? Well, they're hormonal surges. And estrogen, generally speaking, uh, in the amounts that are in the blood when you're not pregnant, it tends to be pro-inflammatory. That's also kind of why uh, during a woman's menstrual cycle, uh, cytokines tend to start peaking uh, right around the time of ovulation because cytokines are immune system messengers and they're part of the immune system. So estrogen tends to kind of turn the immune system on. Now in puberty, of course, it's where you're first getting your huge surge of these hormones like estrogen and testosterone and progesterone. And in susceptible people, usually from a genetic uh, susceptibility, that can be the tipping point. That can be the trigger that triggers the Hashimoto's. Unfortunately, uh, it usually takes several years before someone finally gets tested for Hashimoto's and then finally gets put on a thyroid medication. And even then, the thyroid medication is, is very often not the whole cure, right? Because the thyroid medication is just replacing the hormones that you can't make from Hashimoto's. It's not really doing anything for the underlying immune system problem, okay? So in puberty, the reason puberty is one of these uh, triggers is because it's the first initial sort of surge of hormones. Now, uh, pregnancy, of course, is a surge of hormones, but for slightly differently. In pregnancy, with the amount of estrogen that you get in pregnancy, it tends to sort of uh, suppress your immune system in a good way, kind of keep it in check. But what we do know in pregnancy, and remember we are talking about TLPR1 and TLPR2 a minute ago, we know that in pregnancy, kind of around in the third trimester, the pendulum swings toward T helper 2 dominance, right? And then after birth and after delivery, the pendulum swings the other way towards T helper 1 dominance. And again, in susceptible people that may have a combination of triggers, like in the other, the, the other videos I've made, there may be a genetic history of Hashimoto's in the family or just other autoimmune disease. There can be other infections going on. There could be different sorts of stress. All those can work and combine together to be the tipping point that pushes someone over the edge and they go from immune system regulation to inflammation and autoimmunity and then you have Hashimoto's. Uh, that's why, I mean, over the years I have seen, looking at all the histories of these people that, that come in that I treat, uh, very often you'll see things like 
my health really declined after I had my first child or my second child or my third child. Or someone will say, uh, when I hit puberty, that's when my health changed. Or, as I'll talk about next, perimenopause is another time when we get a big hormonal change. Now, in perimenopause, we're not getting surges of hormones, we're getting dropping levels of hormones. It's a surge the other direction. Primarily, it's a drop in estrogen and DHEA uh, sulfate. And that tends to promote a more T helper one dominant situation. And again, I, I hate to use that terminology because it makes it really, really sound simple, but it's not simple. It's actually quite complicated. And what is extremely important is that whoever you're working with, like if you think you, like if you have Hashimoto's and you're still having symptoms like I mentioned before, and you're going through one of these uh, hormonal uh, times, these hormonal switches, you've got to know what your immunophenotype is. And that is, what is your immune system fingerprint? Um, what, that allow, what that testing allows uh, the doctor who's trained to do is to look very carefully and kind of laser focused on what is your immune system doing in terms of T helper one cells and T helper two cells and CD4 and CD8 and uh, TH17 and regulatory T cells. It's not just as simple as saying, all Hashimoto's, all Hashimoto's patients are T helper two dominant. It doesn't work like that. You are an individual, even though you have Hashimoto's, even though you have some of the same symptoms, your case needs to be handled uh, on your terms, right? What, what your system is, because you have your own exposures to, you know, toxins and infections and that kind of stuff. And it just isn't the same. You just really can't do it kind of a, you really shouldn't, I should say, do it in sort of a cookie cutter way. So let me back up and review this. So why is puberty, pregnancy, and perimenopause such a trigger for Hashimoto's? Because it involves hormonal changes. In puberty, it's the first initial surge of hormones. In pregnancy, it's a, a high level of hormones uh, that drop. And in perimenopause, it's a dropping level of hormones that tends to uh, promote a Th1 dominance in the case of perimenopause. And for some people who are susceptible, either through genetic risk or some of these other triggers I've mentioned, it really can push them over the cliff and be the tipping point for how they develop Hashimoto's. So look, what I want to leave you with is this. Uh, if you have Hashimoto's and you're still having symptoms, even though you take medication, even though your labs look okay, if someone's not talking to you about your immunophenotype and not talking about these potential hormone issues, you need to find a doctor who will. Uh, secondly, if you uh, have noticed that your health has really gone down the tube since uh, puberty or pregnancy or perimenopause, unfortunately, there's a really good chance you have Hashimoto's because it's the most common organ-specific autoimmune condition there is. So if someone's not talking to you about antibody testing and immunophenotype, then it's time you find someone who will because there's a lot you can do, not only for Hashimoto's, but for other autoimmune conditions. You just got to know what you're dealing with. So please make sure you're working with a doctor that understands all that stuff we just talked about. Okay, I'll see you next time.